Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, I'm so glad that you stopped by. I'm Carol, the Thrifty Chic Housewife. I hope that you will consider subscribing to my channel, like and share my videos, and follow me on social media. I will leave all the links in the description box below. Speaking of social media, I have recently started a Facebook group for canning. So if you are a canner, which I'm assuming that you are since you ended up on this video or you are interested in canning, we would love to have you join us in our group. So pop on over to Facebook Facebook, check out Canning with Carol and Friends and you can join in on the fun that we're having there. Speaking of the Facebook group, uh, Canning Up Sweet Potatoes was a request by you guys. Uh, lots of interest in canning sweet potatoes this time of year. So that's what we are going to do today. Now I am going to be canning mine. You know that if you've been around my channel very much, you know that I like to put a Carol twist on just about everything. So I'm going to be canning mine up in a light syrup with a little bit of cinnamon stick in the background. But you can totally can them just in boiling water instead of the syrup if you prefer. But I love candied sweet potatoes this time of year, so that's how I'm going to do mine. So we're going to start out um, by making our light syrup. Um, but just as an FYI, what I have going on so far, we need to um, cook our sweet potatoes a little bit to make them easier to peel. Um, and to soften them just a little bit, we need to hot pack them, so we need them to be hot. So what I've got is I'm using my trusty old Victorio steam canner, and I know you guys are all a buzz about this canner, and I know it's my fault. Hashtag Carol made me do it, I know. Um, anyway, this is also a great stock pot. So I've taken the rack out, and that's what I'm doing today. I'm using it as a stock pot for my sweet potatoes. I have about 10 pounds of these guys, about medium size and I have them covered with water in there and I'm bringing them up to temperature. And we're gonna let them boil 10 to 20 minutes. We just want them to soften a little bit, get heated up and make it easier to peel them. I don't really recommend peeling them uh, without cooking them first. I know it's a little difficult to do because they are gonna be warm to the touch, um, but peeling them beforehand, if you've ever done that, they tend to oxidize really quickly because of the, con the sugar content. Um, and it's hard to keep them from turning an ugly brown. And we don't want that. So we're going to par cook our sweet potatoes. And that's what I've got going on there. And while that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and put together my sugar syrup. Okay, I brought you in a little bit closer so you can better see what I have going on here. I just have a medium sized saucepan and to my saucepan, I am going to be using brown sugar. Now you can use white sugar, but I love that rich molasses flavor brown sugar has, especially with sweet potatoes. So I'm gonna be using brown sugar here. I have three and a quarter cups of lightly packed brown sugar and it is totally safe to use either brown or white sugar. You can switch those out in canning. So um, nothing to worry about there. And then to my brown sugar, I'm gonna add eight cups of water. And then to that, I'm just going to add a cinnamon stick, just to have a little bit of cinnamon flavor in the background goes so well with sweet potatoes this time of year. So what I'm gonna do now is put that on my stove, bring it up to a boil. We don't want to have any of our water evaporate so I'm going to cover it with a lid and bring it up to a simmer at first but it needs to be boiling when we use it so um, I'm going to go ahead get it simmering so the sugar can dissolve but again I'm going to have a lid on it so that I do not lose any of uh, there's no evaporation that happens so while that's happening we're going to cook our sweet potatoes and get ready to peel them okay guys I am heating my syrup on the stove with the lid on again we don't want any evaporation to take place from our syrup and my sweet potatoes have come up to a boil. I did put the lid on them so they would come up to a boil quicker. quicker. And we're going to let them boil, like I said, 10 to 20 minutes. You just want them to start to soften and make it easy to remove the peeling. So when we get there, I'll bring you back and we will get started peeling our potatoes. Okay, my potatoes are pretty tender. I just tested them by using a fork and you can feel that they're starting to become tender. So now what we need to do is I went ahead and turned my pot off and I'm just letting my potatoes sit in my pot. And what I'm gonna do is just take a few out at a time to let them cool enough that I can handle them. But we wanna try to keep them warm if we can. We need to can them warm. 
Okay guys, I found the easiest way to cool them so that you can peel them easily is to go ahead and cut them in chunks and then peel them that way. They'll cool a little bit quicker for you and then it's a little it's easier to peel them because they are pretty pretty hot and it's kind of hard to do when they're hot obviously, but that that's the best way that I have found um, to get them to cool a little more quickly and then they're super easy to peel. Okay guys, we are all set for canning. I peeled all of my sweet potatoes. Um, that, what I showed you was the easiest way I have found to do them. Um, if you have an of glove or something like that or gloves that help with the heat, that would help you here. Um, but this worked pretty well, letting them cool for a few minutes after you cut them, then they're cool enough that you can easily peel them. Um, sweet potatoes are a low acid food, so we must pressure can them. So I have my, I have, about three inches of almost simmering water in the bottom of my uh, pressure canner. I did bring my syrup up to a boil, so we're all good to go with that. Uh, modern canning guidelines state that we do not need to pre-sterilize jars or lids as long as we're going to be canning for 10 minutes or more. And we are, I'm going to be processing um, quartz, so we're going to be processing for 90 minutes. If you do pints, you're going to be processing for 65 minutes, and we're looking for one inch head space. Okay guys, you wanna start with hot jars. I think I failed to mention, I after I wash my jars, I am keeping them hot in a sink full of hot water. And I have found the easiest way to fill your jars is with your fingers. You can use tongs, you can use a spoon, whatever works for you. But we wanna fill our jars to one inch head space with our sweet potato chunks. Okay, once you get your sweet potato chunks in there, then you're gonna go ahead and ladle your syrup on them. Mine's dark because I use brown sugar and that little bit of cinnamon smells amazing. It's gonna be delicious. Want to use your debubbling tool, a chopstick, or a plastic butter knife to remove the air bubbles. And if your headspace changes, you may need to add a little more syrup. And then use a paper towel dipped in white vinegar to clean your rims. You want to make sure there's, if you use sugar syrup, that there's nothing sticky left on your rims. Center your lid, then apply your bands to fingertip tight. Okay, 10 pounds of potatoes gave me six quarts of sweet potatoes and I had just about the right amount of syrup as well. So we can go ahead and um, to keep our jars nice and clean, I like to use the vinegar I use to clean the rims. I take what's left, a couple of tablespoons and put it in my canning water to keep my jars nice and clean during the canning process. That way no mineral deposits in your water collect on the outside of your jars. And we can go ahead and put on our lid with the All-American canner, you line up the arrow with the knot and then you um, tighten your thumb screws two at a time opposites and then you want to crank your heat up to high and then once we see steam coming out of our vent we're going to let it vent for 10 minutes Okay guys, we have a steady stream of steam coming out of our steam vent, so we're gonna let that happen for 10 minutes. After our 10 minutes are up, then we can go ahead and apply our weight. Um, make sure you know your altitude. That will determine what PSI you're supposed to be using. I'm under a thousand feet, so I'm gonna be canning at 10 pounds of pressure, but you need to double check. You need to make sure that you know. Um, and when we get there, I'll bring you back. We'll put the weight on, bring it up to temperature, and then we can start our processing time. Hey guys, we've been venting for 10 minutes, so I'm ready to apply my weight. Again, make sure you know your PSI. I'm looking for 10. I know some of you are intimidated about putting the weight on the vent, but it, you're really not going to get burned as long as you pay attention to what you're doing. So I just kind of rock it on. So it's really not a big deal, so don't be intimidated by that. 
Um, anyway, we're going to bring our canner up to temperature, up to pressure. I'm going to be canning, like I said, at 10 PSI. I have a dual gauge canner but it works as a weighted gauge so I'm canning at 10 psi if you have a dial gauge canner you're going to be canning at 11 psi so once we get there my weight will start rocking and rolling and we can start timing okay guys time to start timing so I am going to set my timer for 90 minutes if you're doing pints your time is 65 minutes we do not want our weight rocking this hard throughout the entire process. So once you once it starts rocking, you want to slowly reduce your heat. You don't want to do it quickly because temperature fluctuations in your canner can cause siphoning to happen. So we don't want that to happen. So just slowly reduce your heat until your weight rocks one to three, one to five, four times a minute, depending on your canner. Make sure you consult your canner's manual to see uh, what it needs to be. Um, and I know that there are canners where the weight needs to rock consistently throughout the process. So make sure that you check your manual and you know what the rocking needs to be. But your heat needs to be reduced um, so that it's just maintaining what is required for your canner to stay at the appropriate PSI. So I'm going to reduce my heat. We're going to process for 90 minutes and I will bring you back. Okay, just for reference for those of you who are new, because many have asked because you're insecure about what should be happening during the, your processing time. So you, you heard my weight, it was rocking, and now it stopped. That's one time. And it's going to start rocking here again in a minute. Second, a few seconds. Then it's rocking again, so now it's rocked twice within a minute. And that should happen one to three, one to four times a minute. See, now it's starting again. And now it's stopping again. So th that should be repeated one to three, one to four times a minute. You don't want it doing that the entire time. So I hope that that clarifies a little bit for those of you who are new to pressure canning and are nervous about it. That's what should be happening. It should start and stop, start and stop. So hope that helps. When my processing time was up, I turned my canner off. I let it return to zero pressure naturally. Uh, once it got to zero pressure, I removed my weight and let it cool for 10 minutes. Then I removed the lid and my jars have been sitting in my canner for about 10 minutes. They've all sealed as they've been sitting. Just a word, anytime you use sugar syrup, it tends to siphon no matter how hard you try. Um, the more time you can give it to cool down that does help with siphoning keeping a really close eye on temperature fluctuations in your canner during the canning process that will help with siphoning also and there are times you just can't avoid it sugar syrup is uh, very prone to it and i tried really hard to control all those factors and it looks like i still experienced some siphoning but our jars are ready to come out and they smell so good with that little bit of cinnamon mixed in the syrup I cannot wait to eat these. Give you a close look. I love the brown sugar in the syrup. Look how pretty that is. So gorgeous, but you can see I did experience some siphoning, um, but it's not bad. Siphoning is, as long as you don't lose more than half of the liquid in your jar and you get a good seal it's nothing to be concerned with so uh, just keep your eye on that if you lose more than half of your liquid or you wouldn't get a good seal um, it's better to put it in the refrigerator and consume it sooner rather than later so anyway i hope you enjoyed coming along with me today it's fall is definitely in the air we've got leaves changing and the crisp cool air um, moving through and it's just a wonderful time of year these are perfect for this time of year so i hope you'll give them a try um, try my little tweak with the brown sugar and the cinnamon stick or you could use other spices that you might like um, any of the warm spice flavors would be delicious even a vanilla a vanilla bean would be lovely in your sugar syrup as well or you can always can them in water so anyway Thanks so much, guys. If you have any comments or questions, leave them for me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pop on over to Facebook. Join Canning with Carol and Friends. We're having a ton of fun over there, and we'd love to have you. Have a great day, and I will see you next time.